we conclude with our eight-week series on staying strong in difficult days and we've had many different words in the last eight weeks and so for our final day I'd like to talk to you about the word stand and so I'd like to begin with an illustration so picture yourself in a battle or at war and so you have prepared well, you have put all the armor on that you need to put on, you have all the weapons at your disposal, you have all the weapons right at your fingertips, and um, you are walking down to the battlefield, and as you look out over the field, you see the enemy approaching. And the enemy is approaching very, very quickly. And the enemy is way bigger than you even had anticipated. So you watch as he gets closer and closer and he begins to throw fiery darts your way from a great distance away. But your shield and your, your breastplate of armor protects you. It protects you. So in your mind, you know that you have to stand. You have to stay standing. You cannot fall because the moment that you fall, that's it. That's it. He will then, the enemy will then exercise all of his evil intentions upon you, standing over you until you cower under his power and his presence. And so you dig your heels in deep and you refuse to fall. You muster every bit of strength that you have just to stay standing. And he tries to get you down, even bringing in more evil partners. And, and throwing more darts your way. But after he has exercised all of his wicked efforts and he's tried everything that he can, you're still standing. You're still standing. And he won't get you to fall. Not today. Not today. Can you relate to this scenario? Do you feel the enemy advancing? Do you see the enemy advancing upon you? Are you barely standing or perhaps you have already fallen? Well, here's two things that we need to remember as we are in this battle. And remember, we're talking about a spiritual battle. So the, the weapons and the armor that we are being given are not, not able to help in the, spirit, in, the, in the physical realm. They're only for this spiritual battle. But remember two things, that standing will give you strength that we need to be standing always rather than fall. And number two is this, that God has given us something to stand upon, something that won't fail us. And what is that? His promises. His promises. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.4 says, Because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. Peter calls them great and precious, and they really are. They're great, which means mighty, and they're precious. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. That's 2 Peter 1.4. In 2 Corinthians 1.20, it says, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And then Christ... And then Christ, um, our, our amen, which means, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. When I think about standing on the promises of God, I'm reminded of an old hymn of the church. And you probably have sung it many times. And if not, listen to these words and remember these words. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God, I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises, I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Another song that I love when I love it when it comes over the radio or when it comes over my phone when I'm listening to the music on my phone is called Promises by Sanctus Real. Sometimes it's hard to keep believing in what you can't see. That everything happens for a reason, even the worst life brings. If you're reaching for an answer and you don't know what to pray, 
Just open up the pages. Let the word be your strength. And hold on to the promises. Hold on to the promises. Jesus is alive. So hold tight. Hold on to the promises. Love those songs. Love those songs. So what are some of those promises? So today, I want to go through some promises um, that would deal with some of our difficulties that we might have. I might not hit it right on for you. And so I hope and pray that you will write down these passages and that you will use them if you need them for your situation. And here's what you can do with the promises of God. You can declare these promises over your people, your loved ones, your family, your friends, over your situations and your dire circumstances and you can keep declaring them in Jesus name because repetition is always a good thing. So here's a few promises that we may want to declare as we stand and as we as we as we continue to stay strong during these difficult days. So let's assume that you are dealing with a lot of doubt about your salvation. You know, maybe it's because of the church that you grew up in, the denomination that you grew up in, and they didn't believe in once saved, always saved. And so you've doubted your salvation from day one. Or maybe you're just doubting it now because Satan Satan is always wants to bring lies and is always bringing lies into our ears. And so you may be dealing with a lot of doubts. Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is a promise. John 1, 12 says, to all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to be the children of God. So have you called on the name of Jesus? Have you believed in him and have you accepted him? Because if you have, these promises are for you and you don't have to doubt your salvation anymore. Claim these promises as your own and watch the doubts go away. Many of us, and I know many of you, just like myself, are dealing with prodigals. Prodigals. Well, if you're dealing with a prodigal that, in, and, and you know, the, the word prodigal can mean many different things. Um, and But a lot of people, a lot of Christian families that have raised their kids in the church or raised their, their kids knowing Christ, a lot of times when they get to a certain age, they forsake all of that. And they put it all aside and they decide that they want to live their own way. In Proverbs 22, 6, this is probably one of the biggest promises that parents can hold on to or grandparents as you deal with a prodigal. It says, direct your children onto the right path and when they are older, they will not leave it. They will not leave it. So hold on to that. Declare these words over your prodigal. Even if you're not with your prodigal, go into their bedroom and pray this over their bed because they will be home someday sleeping in that bed again and declare it every day. James 5.16 says, because here's, here's another promise, because I know you've been praying. I know you've been praying because I pray for my own. It says, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So hold on to that promise and declare those words because an earnest prayer is so powerful and, and, it's, and it produces power and wonderful results. Or take the parables that are found in Luke chapter 15. There's three of them that so deal with a prodigal talks about the shepherd leaving the 99 sheep in the fold to go out and look for that lost sheep. Claim that as your prodigal, I mean, as your parable. And then it talks about the lost son and how he comes home or the lost coin. So take those stories, those prodigals, and claim them as your own. As I was uh, researching uh, promises for prodigals. I ran across a book that's called Promises for Prodigals, and it was it looks like a very good book. In fact, I think I'm going to order it. But it's by Lori Wilkerson Stewart, and in this book, she shares many promises that you can claim for your prodigal child. But she also shares her own harrowing story of in two at 
in the year 2011 when her son, her teenage son, decided that he wanted nothing more to do with their faith and what she had brought her child up to know. And so he's rejected Christianity and all of that. And she shares it and she is still praying for that prodigal. She says, I have a great relationship with my son, even though we don't agree on some of the basic doctrines of the Bible. And she's believing that God's just going to bring him back. And I believe he will because she's praying and because she's declaring these promises over her child. And you can do the same as well as me. And also, maybe you're dealing with a health issue or a health scare or an uncertainty and you don't know what. Remember what Isaiah the prophet said about Jesus in Isaiah 61 1. He said, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, the brokenhearted to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be free. You can use this to, to claim victory and claim freedom from addiction, from a broken heart, from, from a, uh, an ailment that's, that's causing you great grief, or maybe a generational bondage, anything like that. There are so many verses in the Bible that you could use for a health issue or a bondage issue or an addiction issue or anything like that. And maybe it's not you, maybe it's a family member or a loved one that is uh, dealing with something. Declare these words over them. Even if you're not in the same room with them, even if you're from a distance, God hears that and he understands that you are, that you are praying this and declaring it over them. Or let's say that maybe you feel alone or you're lonely or you feel abandoned. Maybe you feel betrayed by a family member or a friend. Remember what it says in Hebrews 13, 5. It says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. The Greek word for, for forsake means to leave behind or to desert. And God says, never ever will I desert you. I will never walk away from you. So you are never alone. Declare those words. Isaiah 41 10 says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you up in my righteous right hand. So use those words and declare them if you're feeling alone at this time. Or maybe you're very, very concerned because you look out into the world and you see evil advancing. And it is advancing at, at, at great speeds. It's advancing unbelievably. Remember what Jesus said in John 16, 33. He said, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. Take those words and claim them and say them over and over because I want to tell you something. When you claim the promises of God, they give you comfort. They help you get, they help you, they, they release you from anxiety and from worry and, and all of those things. And it gives you confidence and hope in the future and for the future. And also you could claim for, as you look at this evil advancing, you could claim Revelation 27, 22, seven that says, look, I am coming soon. Jesus says, I'm coming soon and I'm bringing my reward with me. So you could claim the, the, the promises that he is coming and he is going to take care of the evil that's all around you. Or let's, let's say that maybe um, you are very concerned about salvation for your loved ones because you've been praying. You've been praying and you haven't seen much of anything happen. We'll claim Psalm 18, 6 that says, In my distress, I cried out to the Lord. Yes, I prayed to my God for help. He heard me from his sanctuary. My cry to him reached his ears. Claim those because that's what David says. He says, my cry reached him to a sanctuary. It reached his ears. And 1 John 5, 14 to 15 says, and we are confident that he has heard our prayers. Um, and since we know he hears us, when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. 
And let me tell you something, when you pray for salvation for your loved ones, that so pleases the Lord. And that is definitely according to his will. He wants everyone to come to repentance. That's what it says. That's what Peter writes about too. So claim those, declare those for your loved ones without Christ and keep praying and keep trusting. And then maybe you're worried or anxious about something. Remember what it says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, pray about everything. Well, it says, first of all, it says, don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank him for all he's done. And when you do this, then you will experience God's peace, it says. He will give you peace. He will release you from that anxiety and that fear if you just do what he says that you will do and then claim his promise of peace. 2 Timothy 1.7, and this is something that we need to always remember. It says that we have not been given, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind, and of a sound mind. The Lord gives us, um, he gives us confidence and boldness. He doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Fear comes from the enemy. It doesn't come from God. So claim those verses. So of course, these are only a few things that we may be struggling with. And I may not have even hit the one that you're really struggling with. Um, I only covered it in a short amount of time. And with only a few verses, there are so many promises in scripture that you can use. But Satan may be, Satan may be bombarding you with something else, like discouragement or depression or reminders of your past. He loves to do that. Or lies that you need that idol or that crutch to get it to get through. Or relationship issues or self-worth or or being good enough, gifted enough, worthy enough, smart enough, or loved enough. Anything could be a big, huge struggle, or it could be something altogether different than that. But whatever it is, make sure to dig your feet in on holy, solid ground and stand firm on his promises. Because when you stand firm on his promises, you will not fall. You will not fall. It's like when I go to the beach and I stand in that, that shallow water, the sand beneath me just sinks and I just continue to sink and I, I can't stand up very long there. But when you stand on the promises of God, it will never sink beneath you. You will always stand strong. You will always stand strong. Find the verses that apply to you. Write them on note cards and recite them over and over again and declare them as your own. Proclaim them over your family, your prodigal, your unsaved loved ones, your difficulties, your worry, your doubts, your health, your friend, your dire circumstances. Whatever it is, proclaim those promises over them. Say this, in Jesus' name, I claim this promise and then say it out loud. Say it out loud. Speak, speak it as though you mean it so that the enemy will flee because the enemy cannot stand up against truth. He cannot stand up against the promises of God. He will flee every single time. So stand firm and say those words out loud. You must say them out loud because Satan can't read your thoughts. You must say them out loud. No doubt when we do this, we will be filled up with assurance and confident hope. So let's stand on the one thing that will never let us fall, the promises of God.